Today is October the 17th. Today, we'll read about the family drama surrounding Solomon's succession to the throne. Today, as we read through the Bible in a year, I'd like you to read 1 Kings chapters 1 to 5. Now, in chapter 1, we see that David was becoming very old. Uh, they looked for a young woman to take care of him in his own age, old age. Her name was Abishag, um, a very, very uh, beautiful young woman. Adonijah, David's oldest living son, sees that his father is not named a king, so he says, Let's take advantage of this. He uh, has allies in um, Joab, who is general of the army, and Abiathar, who looks to be the chief priests. Um, those two support Adonijah, and Adonijah crowns himself king. When Nathan the prophet finds out about this, he goes to Bathsheba and says, Bathsheba, Adonijah has declared himself king. The next step for Adonijah would be to kill you and to kill Solomon, his only adversary, his, uh, the only other person who has a claim to the kingship. Well, Nathan and uh, Bathsheba go to David and uh, ask what David has done. When David finds out about it, he says, oh, no, I want Solomon to be king. Now, when Adonijah was uh, declared king, he had the two supporters, um, Joab and Abiathar. But there are five people listed who opposed Adonijah's crowning as king. Benaiah, who's the captain of David's personal bodyguard, one of the 30 and captain of the bodyguard. Shimei, Shimei was the man who cursed David when he fled from Saul. But when Saul was then killed in battle and David came back as king, Shimei approached David and said, uh, please forgive me. David said, uh, live here in Jerusalem. Ray, a man never named before and never named again. Zadok, one of the other priests, it's interesting that up to this point, Abiathar and Zadok are always named together. In fact, after this point, Abiathar and Zadok are always named together. But here they stand opposed to each other. Abiathar supporting Adonijah, Zadok supporting Solomon, and then Nathan, the prophet. They uh, anoint Solomon as king when Adonijah finds out that his father David has uh, passed the kingship to Solomon and had Solomon anointed as king. Adonijah comes to Solomon and says, please swear that you won't kill me. And Solomon says, that's fine. If you behave yourself, I won't kill you. In chapter 2, David gives final instructions to Solomon before he dies. Now, he does the standard. He says, uh, uh, be strong and courageous, obey the Lord, seek the Lord. But he also says, uh, this tribe of Gilead was kind to me. When I fled from Saul, they hid me. Be kind to them. Solomon invited them into the palace, and they became permanent guests at Solomon's table. But David also said, Joab and Shimei, um, these are two men who are evil men. He doesn't come right out and say kill them, but he does say for both of them, don't let them die of old age. <laughs> you know what the alternative is. At the end of uh, chapter 2, Solomon establishes his rule, 
his brother Adonijah um, goes to Bathsheba and says, Bathsheba, Abishag, David's last wife, a young woman who actually never truly lay with David. She just cared for him in his old age. Um, Have Solomon give her to me as my wife. Bathsheba approached Solomon. It's interesting that Solomon uh, made his mother uh, the queen mother. He gave her a throne in which she could sit by him. Bathsheba said, Adonijah would like Abishag as a wife. Solomon said, oh, that can't be. She was queen to my father. If he gets Abishag, then he has a claim to the kingdom. He has Benaiah go and kill Adonijah. Then Benaiah goes and kills Joab and uh, Shimei. Solomon had said to Shimei, as long as you stay in Jerusalem, you're safe. You leave Jerusalem, I, uh, I can't guarantee your safety. Well, after three or four years, Shimei leaves Jerusalem to take care of family business. And uh, when Solomon finds out about it, he has Benaiah kill Shimei too. Now, Shimei is mentioned apparently because he had a following. Adonijah certainly had a following. Um, These two threats are eliminated, and Solomon's rule is now established. In chapter 3, Solomon has a vision. The Lord comes to him and says, ask whatever you want. You're David's son. I'll give you whatever you want. Solomon says, I won't ask for for, uh, uh, gold. I won't ask for fame. Just give me wisdom so I can rule well. The Lord says, that's a great answer. I'm going to give you the wisdom and um, the wealth and the fame. And at the end of chapter 3, we have the famous story that shows just how wise Solomon was. In chapter 4, his courtly officials are named in chapters 5 and 6. Solomon closes the deals to build the temple. We'll come back tomorrow and we'll talk more about the temple. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we'll see what happens when Solomon loses focus.